Uh, God bless you, saints. I just want to share with you about um, how God um, works in finances for believers. And in this life, like finances are a resource that everyone needs in order to purchase things to survive. And so I just want to share with you some things in scripture and also in my own life, how I saw God working like financial miracles for me. And just, just to encourage you to, um, to have faith that God can provide for you financially. Um, God will provide your needs and scripture is very clear about that. And I just want to share with you some verses about that and also some, some testimonies to help you because I know that the times ahead are going to be difficult. So you need to start now so that when those difficult times come that you won't be in, in turmoil in those problems because you already started sowing now before the problem comes. And so this is actually money has a spiritual principle to it. And you need to un understand something that God is spirit and the things that he gives you, uh, gives you are spiritual things. And so when we talk about finances, we have to remember finance is something uh, physical, but it's in the hands of spiritual beings. And so the Lord, so in order for you to receive finances in this world, a person in their free will has to give you the, the uh, someone has to be an agent that takes this money and gives it to you, right? So money is physical, but the person who comes to you or the person who transfers money is a spiritual being and so God works through through a person to give you finances and sometimes it's not only finances e even like spiritual gifts can can come through a person that God will send to you to to give you spiritual gifts so so I just want to share with you some testimony I uh, one testimony that I have was when I was at Cal Poly uh, my engineering school and I was in my last year and I didn't have money for the for the rest of my school year. I didn't have all the money for my for my education. And my dad told me, you know, what, I'm not gonna take out more money. Like you have to figure like figure it, it, it out. So I was like, man, how's how is it gonna happen? And um, and it was it was it was like eight thousand dollars somewhere around there that I needed. And uh, and so I remember being in my room at college and on my knees and I said, Lord, I really want to finish my education uh, because I want, to, I want to glorify you on my campus. I want to live for you. So my focus was like Jesus says in Matthew 6, 33, seek first my kingdom and its righteousness and all, your, and all the things that you need will be provided for you, right? So I said, Lord, I want to stay at Cal Poly. I want to finish my degree. I want to continue to share your love with the people at my school. Yeah, I want to finish my education, but I really want to I really want to stay here and serve in our church and make disciples like that was really in my heart. And it was true. Like I was already doing that already at the time. So what happened was two days later, my professor comes up to me after class and she and she said, do you need money for school? I didn't tell anyone about this need. Nobody. Right. So she so she was the head of the honors uh, department for engineering. And I was not an honor student. I shouldn't even I shouldn't have even been considered for the for for any money. But she came up to me and said, "Do you need money?" Like two days after I prayed for that, and she said, "Oh, come to my office." And uh, so she like I think the first disperse disbursement was like five five thousand dollars something like that five thousand dollars, and then the next one was three thousand for the next quarter. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. Within 48 hours, God like moved on the heart of my professor who was the head of the honors department to ask me if I needed money for school and she just dispersed it. And that was just incredible. So my faith has increased so much. And I've seen God do this uh, multiple times for me. I almost felt like the last minute, like he just shows up in such a, in such a mighty way. Um, I remember uh, even in, in Pakistan, like I had a list of people's needs. So many, like it came up to like $2,000 of needs. And I started like thinking, okay, how, how, how can I make this money? Like I should just like start an online business or do something. I spent like six, seven hours trying to figure out, okay, how can I earn money for the for these people's needs here in Pakistan? And then it was like 11 o'clock at night and I, and I felt like I should just go on the roof and pray and say, Lord, like I 
feel like what I'm doing is of my own flesh and uh, these are your people's needs and, and you have to take care of them. Like I'm only going to pray for them, but Lord, you have to make it happen. Anyways, I was praying on the roof and I think it was Psalm uh, 107, I think it, it is, where the Lord sends out his word and he healed them and delivered them and delivered them out of all of their destruction. So I said, Lord, send your word to someone to deliver these people who have these financial needs here in Pakistan. I went to bed and I woke up that morning and somebody walked into the bank in America. I'm in, I'm in Pakistan. Somebody walked into the bank around the time that I was praying and going and going to sleep. Somebody deposited two thousand dollars, which was exactly the amount of money that I needed to help all the people on, on my on, on my list. That it was, it was incredible. Like only God can can do stuff like that, right? Um, I remember the Lord speaking to me about my wife. And uh, you know, wedding wedding stuff's coming up, and we're planning. And then I'm like, I have I have no money. Like I worked at Target, I did ministry work, but I was just not able to rate to save money. I was living hand hand to mouth. I was literally like measuring my my gasoline, um, going into like after I, I got paid, I put the money in the gas tank. I sent money for missions. I took care of my my, my grocery bills. And there was very little money. I think maybe twenty dollars or something like that. Was all, was all I had. And then the, the tax return uh, came and and I was like, okay, finally I can take this money and save it. And I was driving home and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, give this money to this person for their for their orphanage. And it was the, the he said, give this tax money to this person. And I said, how am I gonna give them my money, Lord? Like the, the wedding is coming up. How am I gonna pay for the wedding? I have no, barely no, no money. And I said, Lord, like have this person uh, message me for this exact amount of money. And that person did. A person from the foreign country messaged me after many, 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 many months saying, hey, I need this amount of money to build a bathroom for my orphanage. And it was the exact amount of money. And I said, okay, I'm sending you the money, right? And I was thinking like the Lord is going to give it to me at the end of the month. No, like no money came uh, the first month. And, and the second month, and I'm thinking like, Lord, like I gave that money in faith and um, I know that you will return it to me, but I don't know when, <laughs> right? And it's coming down. And I remember talking to my friend at, at Panda Express. And he said, bro, don't worry about it. Like God will take care of it. And I was thinking like, maybe he's gonna like help me out. No, it wasn't him. I went home after after talking with my, with my, with my friend and I went to my mailbox and somebody sent me a check for four times the amount. And he said in the letter, use it however you want to use it. And he was so he was just like t- telling me, use it however you want. And I was like, wow, like it was four times the amount. Right. And they covered it covered all of my wedding expenses. And then our church, like they were able to support like the plane tickets. And I paid for the ring. I, I worked for the ring. Um, but yeah, it was amazing to see God just come for me in so many different ways. He really built my faith. And it was good to have those experiences before I went to the mission field because God was telling me again and again, you know, don't trust on man, trust on me. And usually when God's like does something financially for uh, for you, it will always come from a place you don't, you do not expect. Right. So I want to just give you these testimonies to tell you, I know I have experiences. I'm not telling just theology. I'm telling you things that actually work and God actually does it. And one of the lessons is this. You must first be seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. Right. And then all these things will will, will be added to, uh, to you. We are called to make disciples. We're called to love. We're called to serve. And that is a foundation for receiving fi- financial provision from the Lord. You must be about his business praying for people like it's just as you grow up in christ you become a servant so that must be the first thing right you must be a person that is service oriented a person that is about the kingdom of god so that's the first one. Second one you must be a person that fears god you you must have a life that is um that is focusing on obeying god's word like you give your life completely to obeying god's word right um in the book of uh, psalm chapter 111 It says, he provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He provides food for those who fear him. 
And even David says, you know, I'm old and I was young. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children begging for bread. So God will provide for you when you pursue righteousness in, in your life and you're seeking to expand God's, God's, God's kingdom now. Like God is looking for that. Um, and surely you will find um, God providing for you financially, right? Now, even Elijah, um, God, like another thing is you must be a person that's receptive to hear from the Holy Spirit. Like God clearly told me to give up the money that I really had to hold on to. I was like, Lord, I'm trying to save this money. And the Lord says, no, give it to this person, right? Elijah was told to go to, the, to a certain place. And the Lord says, I will provide for you water there. And every day the raven will come and feed you there twice a day. And so Elijah had to go to that exact place where God told him to and God took care of him there. So the second thing is you need to hear the voice of God. Like that's the second part. You need to fear God. You need to be serving God and you need to hear his voice. Amen. Um, also, like remember, like finances is in the hands of men and, and women like money is in the hands of somebody right and so god needs needs to connect you with this person right and there is a a mechanism in the spirit how god does that now now listen to this psalm 112 uh verse uh, four light dawns in the darkness for the upright he is gracious merciful and righteous it is well with the man who deals generously and lends who conducts his affairs with justice and now here's a kicker for the righteous will never be moved he will be remembered forever the person that is righteous will never be moved and he will be remembered god will put you in remembrance because you were a person that was generous you dealt um you did you dealt your you dealt with your affairs with justice but like you're a godly you're a person of godly character right you were a generous person with your finances when you had it you were gracious you are righteous um yes and you are merciful right so you need the proper heart right and then god will bring you to remembrance uh, before himself and then he will move on your behalf like Cornelius, for example, in Acts chapter 10, it says very clearly that Cornelius was a man that feared God. He prayed regularly and gave alms to the poor. When the angel came to him, when he was praying at three o'clock in the afternoon, he said, uh, Cornelius, your prayers and your alms, your generous giving has ascended to the Lord as a memorial, right? And then he says, send for Peter, and he will and he will tell you, you know, and, he, and then like Cornelius was giving uh, direct instructions to call for Peter. Right. And God had already showed him about the tarp and the unclean animals and how like Peter was was supposed to go to the to the Gentiles, too. Right. So God was preparing Peter to 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 go to Cornelius house. Right. So look at this. The reason why Cornelius was remembered before God was because he was a man who feared God. He gave alms to the poor and he prayed regularly, right? And so God remembered him and then God sent Peter to him, right? This is how the connections are, are made. God will put people into remembrance when you when you meet these conditions, right? People will come to you. And sometimes it could be spirit, like spiritual blessing, like impartation. Sometimes it's financial blessing. Like God will put you in remembrance to somebody, somewhere, to send you financial help because you've been a person that was generous. God will put you in remembrance to that person, right? Um, so these are some things that happen. And uh, even um, here, I had to uh, apply for my daughter's a passport one time and I had no money. I had to spend it on the electric bill. Like I was saving the money for her passport um, stuff. And I was like, I said, I don't have money. Her appointment was like in a few days. I had to go to Islamabad to get her, her passport made. And then I said, I went to the church and I just prayed by my side. I said, Lord, you're my father. You know my needs and you know how to how to give me this money so I can take care of this. The next morning, somebody sent me the exact amount of money. They said, while I was in prayer, 
God told me to send you this money. See, God put me in remembrance to my friend in America who didn't even know my need. I didn't, she didn't know the amount that, that, that I needed, but God put me in remembrance, right? And she sent that money in obedience, and that money was what I needed to pay for my daughter's passport. So this is how this works, right? We must, God will put you in remembrance when you are generous, you walk in the fear of God, you're a man of prayer, you don't need to fear anything, your children will not be begging for bread, you'll be taken care of. Jesus promised us that he provide all of our needs, right? If we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, right? So it's very, very important for you to live a godly life. Like don't allow the devil to come in because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, right? And the Lord puts those in remembrance who walk in the fear of God, right? So that's so this happened to me multiple times. Even I, I remember like, again, my last tax return, right? When I became a missionary, I went to Pakistan and my tax return was still like gonna come to me. And there were some people that had needs here. And I told my wife, you know, how it says in Luke, you know, give and it should be given to you. And it says somewhere in the Psalms too, like when you lend to the poor, like you put God on, on like a debt, like God will God will rep repay you for that debt. Right? God will repay you. So I went on the scripture verses, right? According to the word of God, I make my decision. And I told my wife, look, God's word says this. Let's trust him and give this money to this family that needs it. Right? God will give us the money back. Sure enough, I gave the money away within two, three days. Somebody from America, who did, did, people don't know about my personal needs mostly. They don't know, right? He, this person went with the exact amount of money, went to, my, to our treasurer at church and says, give this money to Kenneth and send it to him in full and send it now. Very clear instructions, right? And then within that week, that money came directly to me to Pakistan. God is amazing. He puts you in remembrance to in front of people. Like you come in that you your name will come into their mind. They will feel like I, I need to help this person because you're walking in the fear of God and God knows your needs and God will release people to you, right? And so also it's the same for you. Like if God is telling you to give money to somebody, it's and you feel it's coming again and again and again to uh, to your mind, it's because God is reminding you, God is putting that person in in remembrance, and God has called you to help that person, right? So you're it's it's a system that God is using, and so we have to be faithful to give and to receive, give and receive, and this is like a, a Holy Spirit thing, right? We are the body of Christ, and God can even use non-believers to do that for you. Remember the story of the of the rich a woman that made a house for Elijah, right? God put her in remembrance because she recognized that Elisha or Elijah was a man of God. She says she told her husband, "Look, I perceive he is a man of God." And what she did, she made a house, she made a room for him for for the prophet, right? And because of what she did on her own heart to do that and to honor the man of God, like she received a son, right? And not only that. Before the famine came, she knew about it. Before the rest of the land knew about it, the prophet came to her and told her, look, there's a famine in, in the land. Go to this place and stay there for, 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 the, for the years of famine and then come back, right? So she received divine instruction from the prophet and the prophet heard from God because this woman was in remembrance with God because she took care of the prophet, right? And so when the famine, before the famine came, he told her, leave this place, stay here. God will take care of you. And then she came back to the land. And then she went to the king to get back her property. And as she's going, as she's coming into the palace, right? Gehazi is telling about the um, this woman, this woman, the same woman, seven years later, that how, how Elisha raised her son from the dead, right? And so this woman steps right in as Gehazi is telling the king about this testimony. And he tells, hey, return her land to her and all of her all of her food and crops, right? Like, return it to her, right? She was put in remembrance because of what she did for the man of God. God remembers these things. Hallelujah. In the book of um, 2 Corinthians, right? Here you go. 2 Corinthians. God, will, God is faithful. Like, when you so uh, abundantly, like... You reap abundantly. It's just a law, right? And there, there's a type, there's things you have to know. One thing, let's go to 
2 Corinthians um, 9. There's, a, there's, there's theology about receiving and giving. There's theology behind this. Everything is laws in the, in the kingdom of God. So I'm just teaching you how these laws work. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. So make a decision what you're going to give. All right. Um, not reluctantly and not under compulsion. Like it must be a complete act of faith, right? And two, you must be a cheerful giver as you give. You're giving in faith because you know that God's going to meet your need when it when the, when the need arises. Hallelujah. And God is able to make all grace abound. He's able to make all grace, power, gifts of the Spirit, finances to you so that having all sufficiency... In all things, at all times, you may abound in every good work, right? God supplies these things so that you can abound in every good work because the point is this. You want to bear fruit, right? By giving to the poor, you're bearing fruit. By giving to people in the church, church, you're bearing fruit. By having finances, you're able to be a channel of blessing so you can abound in every good work to continue to bear spiritual fruit. Money itself is not the blessing. It's the fruit that you get from the giving and receiving. There's fruit that's being, that, that's being gained in the spirit as you do that, right? And it says, and God's able to make all grace abound to you, right? And remember, this is an amazing thing too. Even spiritual gifts can be can be received or can be uh, can be experienced by sowing finances in faith, right? You according to the word of God, right? The money itself is not the seed; it's the faith behind your giving that's the seed, right? And uh, I had uh, given uh, a offering to a man of God in America, right? And uh, from Street Ministry Seven, Street Ministry Seven, and I see like he lays hands on people. People get drunk on the holy spirit filled with the holy spirit they're they're joyful they're laughing they're, they're the demons are coming up people are getting de delivered and i'm like wow that is that is amazing how god is is using du uh, dustin all right and uh i was going through a really hard time in that time i was going through like um my, i was getting attacked in my dreams non-stop i was getting i was feeling like i was getting beat down like i was such i needed joy from the lord and I had sown into his ministry, and then he emailed me back. He's saying, hey, I'm praying for you. And that night, as I'm praying, I felt this bubbling of joy just rise out of me, and I started to be joyful. And I was like, what is this? I was feeling like tingling all over my body, and I was feeling joy. And the Bible tells us, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength, and I needed strength. I was for two, three months at a hard time praying pro properly, but I sowed into the life of Dustin because I, you know, because I, I honored the anointing upon his life, and and be, and God saw that, right? And Dustin prayed for me in his, you know, in America, now in Pakistan, and that night that joy was welling up over me, and I was like in my room overwhelmed with the joy and with the strength of god and then i was able to get out of that rut right so he's able to make all grace abound to you and also you're able to have all sufficiency in all things and even even in natural things that you need hallelujah right in order to be a blessing to someone else you have to be blessed right in order to give joy to others you have to have joy in order to give finances you have to have finances right like God's able to do that. Hallelujah. So, and the point is this, right? It's for you to bear fruit. For you to bear fruit. That's all this is about, right? Money is in self is not really the blessing. It's the fruit that you get from, from sowing and reaping. That's what it's about, right? So, don't worry. So, you A, be generous. You know, sow bountifully. And bountifully is relative to you right because if you sow ten dollars that may be a lot for you right it depends on you right right ten dollars could be a lot because i know when i was when i was going to america when i was in america for sabbatical for my for my break with my wife and my children i didn't take a lot of money from the from the church i said lord i'm gonna take this much money and the rest i'm just gonna trust that you provide for me right I remember Holy Spirit was giving me, you know, give money to this ministry. I'm like, look, I don't have much money to give. But like, it kept coming to me. It kept coming to me. And so by faith, I sold that, that, that money to that ministry. By faith, 
right? And then within one or two days, I got back a hundredfold. Someone said, hey, Kenneth, I want to give you this money. I felt like God was telling me. I didn't, I didn't even know this person. I don't even, I don't remember the person's name. I don't, you know, I, I, I met this person, I guess, like when I went to a, to a church to share about our, our ministry. Yeah, so my son came in, so I don't, I kind of lost where I was. But yeah, so remember this. Um, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Grow up in the maturity. Do your ministry that God's called you to do. You know, serve, love people, be faithful, grow in the fear of God. All right, God will put you in, re in remembrance when, the, when you need the finances. God will move on your behalf. Be generous when you have. And also when you, when you don't have, you know, give something um, into, the, into the kingdom of, of God. You know, it's by faith. We're not under the law. Just give according to your faith, right? The thing that you need is usually the thing that you have to give away, right? And so the amount is not important. Uh, the amount has to be like you're giving by faith because you're trusting God will come through for you. And I've seen this multiple times again and again and again where I, I gave in love to somebody and it was a sacrifice to me. And within like, like 48 hours or even 24 hours, even 12 hours, Somebody came to me and said, hey, I felt like God told me to, to uh, give you this. I was like, wow, like I didn't know how I was going to make it because I had given my, my money to, to somebody. But, I, you know, I go on the word of God. Before I give, I say, according to the word of God, as it's written, give and it should be given to you. Right. And that the Lord remembers, you know, when we give. So then I give according to the word of God. Right. Um, and so, yeah, we've seen that again. Even my wife. The same thing she had some money and like it was a lot it was like money that she wanted to go buy something with but she felt like holy spirit what, what the holy spirit was telling her to give it to this person she said hey can you please wire this person to to this person right and he needed it he he, he actually like, like needed it and then two three days later somebody came that we never met he says i felt like god was telling me to uh, give you this and she got three times back than what she gave away so this is how this is how this works you know so walk in the love relationship with jesus christ walk in the fear of god grow in the fear of god be faith be faith faithful and god will put you in remembrance and then things will happen for you so i hope this helps you um these are uh that's the christian life for you it's it's sometimes you know the answer does not come for two three months Sometimes it happens 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, a week, two weeks later. God works on his timing. Just focus on your relationship with him. This is the number one thing. And then God will remember you um, and he will move on your behalf. So hope this helps you. God bless you. And uh, the Lord is with you and he, he, is, he is faithful to provide and fight for you. He is the Lord of Lords. There's nothing under that is not in his control. All right. Um, the thing is, like, we have to be obedient too, right? When the Lord tells me to give my money, I need to give my money because that's how God works. God does, God speaks to us, but then it's we must obey, right? So I encourage you, be faithful to give when God is telling you to give and be expecting that God will provide for you when you live a life of giving and service. God will fight for you. So God bless you.